Hi, my name is Meeta Kumar. This module is the first of the set dealing with how consumers make their decisions about what to consume and in what quantities. This problem is referred to the problem of consumer's choice dealt with in consumer theory. In this module, we will take the first steps towards understanding how consumers make their choices by introducing the concepts of budget sets and budget lines. As already mentioned, consumer theory analyzes decisions made by consumers regarding what goods to buy and in what quantities. What a consumer buys depends on two things. What does the consumer want? And what can the consumer afford to buy? Let us examine the second question first. What are the combinations of goods that the consumer can afford to buy? Suppose you have rupees 50. What are the things that you can buy from your school canteen? Imagine a situation where your school canteen sells chocolates at rupees 10 each and biscuits at rupees 5 a packet and nothing else. How many chocolates could you buy if you only bought chocolates? You could buy at most five chocolates. What if you bought only biscuits? You would at most buy 10 packets of biscuits. In brief, how much you can buy depends on how much money you have and the prices of goods available in the market. In any society, the resources are not unlimited in supply. They are scarce, so they are priced. As a result, goods and services made from these resources are also priced. The problem of choice arises because goods and services are not free. You have to pay for them. As a first step, we assume that a consumer can only spend what she earns. So the amount that she buys depends on her budget or on her income. To be more precise, it depends on the prices of goods available in the market and her income. We start this discussion by defining a budget set. This is a set of bundles of goods affordable to a consumer, given her income and given prices of those goods. We can formulate the example of your school canteen in more general terms. Consider two goods X and Y with prices rupees 2 and rupees 5 per unit respectively and a consumer's income of rupees 20. X and Y could be chocolates and biscuits or movie tickets and books or any other goods that we wish to consider. As in the previous model, we picked two goods for discussion because that allows us to represent the problem on a two-dimensional diagram. The logic can be easily extended to discussion of many goods. You can understand that it is not possible for a consumer to afford all combinations of goods X and Y given her income. In this context, the bundles which a consumer can afford given her income and the prices of those goods constitutes the budget set. Let us consider the bundles 15334152 shown here, which show the various combinations of good X and good Y. The first number in brackets refers to the quantity of X, and the second number refers to the quantity of Y. Thus, each bundle is written as an ordered pair. You may have come across ordered pairs when doing graphs in mathematics. For the first bundle, a consumer would require 2 into 1 plus 5 into 5 rupees, which is equal to 27 rupees. For the second bundle, she would require 21 rupees. For the third bundle, similarly, she would require 13 rupees. And for the fourth, 20. Recall that our consumer has only 20 rupees. Hence, bundles 1 and 2 will not be affordable to her, whereas she can afford bundles 3 and 4. We say that bundles 3 and 4 are in her budget set. That is, she can afford them or she has enough money to pay for them. 
Bundle 4 costs exactly her income and is said to be on her budget line. Bundle 3, which costs less than her income, is said to be lower than her budget line, but is still affordable. If she opts for bundle 3, how much money will she have left? Notice that she has rupees 7 left over. The line that shows all possible combinations of goods that exhaust the consumer's income for a given set of prices of the two goods is called a budget line. Let us explain these concepts with one more example. A consumer likes watching movies and reading books. She has 2,000 rupees available to spend on movie tickets and on books. The price of each movie ticket is rupees 50 and the price of each book is 100. Let us look at the diagram given here. In this case, the two goods we are considering are movie tickets, which we show on the x-axis, and books, which we show on the y-axis. The price of each movie ticket is rupees 50, as we said before, and the price of each book is rupees 100, and the total income available is 2,000. If the consumer chooses to spend all her income on books only, she will be able to buy 20 books, given that the price of books is rupees 100 a book. If she chooses to spend all her income only on movie tickets, she can buy at most 40 movie tickets at the given price of rupees 50 a movie ticket. Or a consumer can choose a combination such as 24 books and 8 movies that lies on the red line in the diagram. In fact, the consumer can also afford a bundle like 8 movies and 12 books. If she chooses such a bundle, she will have some income left over. Can you calculate how much? The answer is rupees 400. Think of a bundle that contains 16 books and 16 movies. How much could a bundle like that cost at existing prices? Can the consumer afford such a bundle? And the answer is obviously no, because such a bundle costs 2400 rupees, and the consumer has only 2000 rupees. The line in brick red color on the diagram shows all possible combinations of movie tickets and books exhausting the consumer's income for the given prices, and this is called the budget line. The triangular area formed by the two axes and the budget line constitutes the budget set, depicting all affordable bundles to a consumer. Any point on or below the budget line in the triangular region shows a combination of goods X and Y as a bundle which is affordable to the consumer. Any point above the budget line is not affordable to the consumer. We now look at what happens if the price of movie tickets changes, other things remaining constant. Suppose the price of a movie ticket goes up to rupees 100. The consumer's income is still rupees 2000 and the price of books continues to be 100 each. What will her budget line now look like? This is described in the diagram given. The green line is the new budget line. Notice the budget line swings in along the x-axis. Let us understand why this happens. The price of books hasn't changed, so the consumer will still buy 20 books for rupees 2000. However, with the increased price of movie tickets, she can at most buy 20 movie tickets now in place of the 40 which she was buying previously. This explains why the budget line hinges on the y-axis and swings in on the x-axis. The consumer could of course choose to buy any combination of books and movie tickets that lies on the new budget line. Notice that several of the combinations that were available to earlier, like 24-8, are now no longer affordable to the consumer. The budget set is smaller than before. What happens if the price of books increases, other things remaining constant? Suppose the price of books increases, 
from rupees 100 to 200, while the price of the movie tickets and consumers' income remain unchanged. The diagram given here shows these changes. The blue line is the new budget line. The price of a movie ticket has not changed. The consumer can still buy 40 movie tickets for 2,000 rupees. However, given her income of 2,000 rupees, the increase in the price of books means that she can at most buy 10 books instead of the 20 that she was buying earlier. The budget line swings in along the y-axis, hinged on the x-axis. The consumer could, of course, choose to buy any combination of books and movie tickets that lie on the new blue budget line. You may notice that she cannot afford a bundle like 12.4, which was previously affordable. Once again, the budget set has become smaller. The budget line is actually also called a price line. To understand this, we start with the concept of slope. The slope of a line is defined as the rise over run. In other words, it is the change in y for a unit change in x. The easiest way to find the slope of a budget line is to divide its y-intercept by the x-intercept. Notice that the x-intercept of the budget line is obtained by dividing the income by the price of good x. Similarly, the y-intercept of the budget line is obtained by dividing the income by the price of the good y. Therefore, whenever the price of either of the goods changes, as in the example above, the new budget line has a different slope. Can you calculate the slope of the budget line in figure 1? The answer is this is 20 divided by 40, which is 0.5. What is the slope of the new budget line in figure 2? And the answer is 20 divided by 20, which is equal to 1. In the diagrams above, notice that any change in prices changes the slope of the budget line. In fact, the slope of the budget line is actually the ratio of the price of the commodity on the x-axis to the price of the commodity on the y-axis. You can easily verify this from the diagrams above. In the above example, the slope of the budget line equals price of movie tickets divided by price of books. Since both the numerator and denominator contain prices expressed in the same units, Slope is a pure number without any units. What is the ratio of the price of movie tickets to the price of books in the case shown in figure 1? Is it equal to the slope of the budget line? Verify this for yourself in all the other cases as well. The budget line is also called a price line because the slope of the budget line is actually the ratio of the price of the commodity on the x-axis to the price of the commodity on the y-axis. Now, let's look at what happens if the consumer's income changes, all else remaining the same. Suppose the price of books and movie tickets remains unchanged, but my income goes up to rupees 2,500. What the consumer can now afford is more of both books and movie tickets. If she spends all her income on movie tickets, she will be able to watch 50 movies. If she chooses to buy only books, she gets 25 books. Or she can choose a combination of books and movies that lies on the new budget line. The diagram here shows what happens to the budget line if these changes take place. That is, income increases, prices don't change. The budget line shifts out parallel to the old budget line. In this situation, the prices of the two goods haven't changed. So the slope of the new budget line must be the same as before. Notice the consumer's budget set is now bigger than before. 
she can afford to buy a bundle such as 12 books and 24 movies which she could not have with her earlier income. If I choose to buy 12 books and 24 movies, how much will I spend? How much income will I have left over? Notice that I will spend 2400 and I will have 100 rupees left over. So although this point is not on my budget line, it is still on my budget set. To summarize what we've discussed so far, we've studied the meaning of a budget set, of a budget line, and the effects of a change in the price of a budget line, and the effect of change in incomes on the budget line. We've also studied the slope of a budget line as a uh, ratio of prices. We will use this concept in the next module to analyze how consumers make their choices. Thank you.